Hi, my name is Bella. I'm going into my third year at Suffolk. I am a general studies major, but when I transfer to a four-year school, I'll be a psychology major. My name is Susan Morales. I'm a student at, at Suffolk. I'm also a peer mentor at the Eastern Campus, and so far my major is liberal arts. One of my favorite hobbies is to go fishing. Hi guys, my name is Brian, and I'm a business administration major with aspirations of law school. This is my third semester here, and go Sharks. I'm a 30-year-old non-traditional student here at Suffolk, so I believe it's never too early or late to start and or continue the career path that's right for you. Hello, my name is Hamida and I major in graphic design. I had been a student here at Suffolk for three years and I'm finally graduating at the end of this upcoming semester. Um, I'm a peer mentor here on the Eastern Campus, and I'm also Vice President of Campus Activities Board and a Senator in Student Government Association. My hobbies include graphic design, digital art, illustration, painting, fashion, and storytelling. Hi, my name is James Carney, and I'm a peer mentor here at Suffolk County Community College. I just started this semester, so I'm not as experienced as some of my colleagues, but uh, I'll have you guys know that every Pokestop on the campus here at Eastern is because of me. I submitted them all. So if you have any Pokemon Go related questions, come to me. Hi, my name is Shannon. I'm a peer mentor here at Suffolk County Community College. Um, I'm a general studies major in the concentration of liberal arts and sciences. I'm going to my third semester at Suffolk. Um, at Suffolk, I'm president and co-founder of the Swim Club, as well as a member of the Music Club and the Honors Club. And I'm also a member of the Honors Program. Um, in my free time, I like to play music. I play like three different instruments and I like to play volleyball and swim. Hello, my name is Marlena Titus and I am a peer mentor here at Suffolk County Community College. I'm currently majoring in communications. It's my third semester and I'm involved in our campus's GSA, our art club, and our honors club as secretary. Um, outside of college, I love to draw both digitally and traditionally, and I love to crochet. I'd advise you to do what I did my first semester and get involved. Reach out to any and all clubs or organizations that you may, or think you may, enjoy, and just make friends. Some advice that I have for incoming students is to definitely get involved. One of the best things that I've done at, during my time at Suffolk is getting involved in clubs. It gave me a great opportunity to meet some amazing people and definitely form some long-lasting, genuine relationships. Have no fear. We do cool stuff with campus activities as well. Just last semester, before midterms, we went snowboarding in Vermont. Well, everyone else did, and I ended up just rolling down the mountain. <laughs> I welcome all the new students, and I know it's not as they expected for them to come into a face to face or some virtual or whatever, but it was, I'm assuming that it's not how they imagined the first year of college. Recently, we had a change due to the pandemic that I'm sure you guys are well aware of coming into this semester. And to be honest with you guys, the spring semester was hard. Nobody was prepared for the change and it was kind of messy, but now that we're heading into the fall semester, the professors are more prepared. All the blackboards are set up and we have established online resources that are just as good as the in-person ones to help get you started on everything. So don't be afraid to use those and don't be afraid to ask for help or anything. Um, Suffolk is a really great place to be, but it's really important to know what classes you need to take for the next semesters and what classes you need to take in general in order to have a smooth sail through each semester. I know my first two semesters I struggled a lot knowing what classes filled what credit requirements, what credit requirements I even needed to fulfill, um, if a class I was taking or wanted to take fulfilled a credit requirement, so on and so forth. Um, so my advice if you're struggling with this is to go to DegreeWorks. Um, once you log into DegreeWorks, you'll see that there's a list of different credit requirements highlighted in either red, blue, or green. Now there is a key on the side in case you forget, but green means that you have already taken a class that has completed this credit requirement and you have the credit. Um, blue means that it's in progress, meaning that a class you're currently enrolled in for that semester is going to fulfill that credit requirement. And red means that you still need to take a class or still need to take another class that'll fulfill that credit requirement. 
Now, as you progress in your degree program, it's very easy to become unsure where you're at and there is a very helpful tool available when you log into my SCCC. On the left box were all the links like vehicle registration or register for classes or view class availability is you will find the student degree works audit. This tool will help you find where you're currently at in your degree program. It will show you a list of all the classes you have to take, what you had taken already out of those classes, and what you have left and what you're currently taking. Um, if you're a transfer student, it will also show you what credits had transferred over, and it will also show you what you had withdrew from. It is a very helpful tool that will help guide you as you progress through your program. Things that I've done at Suffolk that has made a huge difference in my enjoyment of being a student at Suffolk was getting involved in the honors program. Um, the honors program does a number of different things for students. The first thing is that the class sizes are smaller than your traditional class. The average size of a class at Suffolk is anywhere from 25 to 35 students and some of the honors classes can be anywhere from 15 to 20 students, maybe even up to like 22. When you're in the honors program, your professors really have the opportunity to get to know you and it's much easier for them to say good things about you as a student because they really have the opportunity to see you perform in the classroom, which makes it much easier when it's your time to transfer and you want to get a letter of recommendation. As a student, one of the more challenging things i found for online learning is staying on top of myself while at my home environment. At school, it's easy to stay focused. You know, I'm in a classroom, I'm looking head on at the teacher and they're lecturing at me just as they're supposed to, but uh, in online learning, you gotta stay on top of yourself. You have to get like a calendar or an agenda or even like an assignment planner so that you can write down all the things you have to do and a time frame for when you want them done by. Because I promise you that if you don't stay on top of them, you will forget you're even enrolled. So definitely keep on top of that. And one of the more unique challenges that you may or may not face is going to be group work. Now, it may seem daunting at first, considering you can't actually go in person and meet up with your peers to collaborate on a physical work, but there are resources like Google Documents, Google Slides, Google Sheets even, where you and your peers can all collaborate and you guys can all have a group chat or Zoom call each other to brainstorm ideas. But in order for all that to happen, you have to make sure you're aware of what you need to get done and when you need it done by. It's always nice to be able to take a class that you actually know you will enjoy and still fulfill a credit requirement that you'll need to graduate. So I hope you use this little bit of knowledge, a bit of advice, and enjoy your fall 2020 semester. Now, I really hope that you have a very nice fall semester, and no matter what happens or how crazy things seem, just know that right now you are on the road to your success and I hope you become very successful. Ultimately, your experience at Suffolk is what you make of it. If you put nothing into it, then your experience at Suffolk isn't going to be very good. But if you really show up and you get involved and you make great relationships with other people, your time at Suffolk is going to be amazing. I'd like to end with the best advice that I can give you. Ask us about our up-and-coming virtual club fair. And if I'm privileged enough to see you there, well then, I guess that Marketing 101 class was worth the investment. We do have two great resources on the Suffolk County Community College homepage. You can email the um, Skills Center and the Counseling Center can both help you with any struggles you might have. Um, but the best advice I can personally give you is to try and stay on top of things as they happen and be honest with yourself. So if you have something you're really struggling with or something that you don't really understand 100%, it could be something that's going to come back and um, make things harder for you later. So if you're honest with yourself in the beginning and tackle things that you don't quite understand, um, the resources in the Skills Center and the Counseling Center are going to be much more useful to you and you're also gonna have a better time reaching out to your professor um, instead of like four weeks later when you've missed like three units because you don't understand. Um, so I just wanna say welcome to Suffolk and we're happy to have you.